I'm going to unbox review the TP-Link Archer B600. This is a Wi-Fi 7 router that I'm going to unbox, review, do all my speed test range tests using my following Wi-Fi 7 devices. I also happen to have the following Wi-Fi 7 devices as well. However, these can't go as fast as these two, so I will be testing with these. I've made a separate video on that, and it's a phone limitation, not a router limitation. This router has a lot of ventilation. As you guys can see, there's a bunch of holes here for running cooler, which is always great. We have some LEDs right here on the back. A lot of holes for ventilation can be wall mounted or can be placed on the table or some flat surface with the rubber feet. As far as the antennas, it moves up 90 degrees and moves down 90 degrees and it goes side to side basically right around a little over 180 degrees and the same is true for essentially all of them. We got a WPS button, LED Wi-Fi on and off, factory reset, 10 gig WAN or LAN, 2.5 gig WAN or LAN and 2.5 gig LAN. We have the power and we have the power on and off. Quick install guide with some info. We have a CAT6A Ethernet cable and we have the power supply. It is 100 to 240 volts and the output is 39.6 watts. I had a chance to play with this thing. I set it up as my main router, did all my speed test, range tests, have all those numbers right here. Let's jump straight into it. By the way, I should mention there were no drops, nothing abnormal. Super easy to set up using the Tether app. Just no issues whatsoever. So let's jump in with the internet speed test. So as you guys know, when you're accessing the internet, you are limited by your internet speeds. Now for me, that would be five gigs up and down, and this router can actually support up to those speeds because it does have a 10 gig port. However, the ports coming out of it are actually capped to 2.5 gigabit speeds. So when I do an ethernet speed test on my computer, I actually get just under those 2.5 gigabit speeds. But at the source, at the router itself, it can actually still sustain up to five gig speeds. So in theory, if a Wi-Fi device was fast enough to get up to five gigs, technically it should be able to do it, but I haven't seen any, any Wi-Fi device reach five gigs, at least not as of now. Now, when we do the Wi-Fi speed test, we actually get faster download speeds than I were to go on Ethernet, again, because at the source it's still five gigs. So when I'm doing a speed test near this thing, I actually got 3.2 down and the upload wasn't quite as fast. I got 1.6 up. So unlike the Ethernet test, which I, I actually do get the, you know, the basically just under 2.5 down and just under 2.5 up. Then we move on to the local speed test and this is how you find the true performance of a router. So I make my computer into the server and I go from Wi-Fi device to router to computer and this basically isolates the router because I'm no longer relying on my ISP, my internet service provider, nor the public speed test server, which can be busy at times. So looking at the results, we could see that we get just under 2.5 gigabit speeds and again, the reason for this is because my computer is acting as the server, so it is going to the 2.5 gigabit port, so it act, it's actually capped to just under those speeds. Now, if this was a faster port, like a 5 gig or a 10 gig, I'm pretty sure the Wi-Fi would be faster because the speed rating of this Wi-Fi is actually decently fast. But we got just under 2.5 gigabit speeds. Now, next we move on to range tests. Now, range tests will vary drastically by location. Essentially, the more obstructions you have, typically the less range you're gonna get, the more of an open area you're in, typically the more range you're gonna get. And antenna placement actually can make a difference as well. So you got you could play with the antennas a little bit to try to get a more optimal, um, you could basically run some speed tests and then adjust the antennas a bit to see if it gets better or worse. So antenna placement does actually matter and I did play with it a little bit. So at 20 feet away inside my place, there was a little bit of a drop in the download, not really by much, and more in the upload, but still doing fairly well. At 50 feet away, this is when I'm outside my place, and I get, obviously, a drop in the download, but still doing very, very well, and a huge drop in the upload, but this is kind of to be expected, and again, still doing not too bad. And at 100 feet, this is when I'm actually across the street, and still getting some very usable numbers. And this thing can go further, I just capped my testing at 100 feet. Now for setup and configuration, use the Tether app, very easy to use, it's available both on iOS and on Android, and it kind of walks you through the process of setting this thing up, kind of tells you pretty much what to connect where, tells you to unplug your modem for a little bit, then plug it in, kind of just walks you through the process of getting a basic setup going, and then it asks you to pick a Wi-Fi name, which is your SSID, and a password, and if you want, 
you can pick the same one of the router you're replacing and your devices should automatically connect to this new one. But uh, the SSID and the password, they are both case sensitive. It gives you kind of the main page. It says if things are working well or not. And it gives you like a client list of X number of clients are connected. And then if you click on that, you can actually see which clients are downloading, which clients are uploading and things of that nature. It gives you basic parental controls included in the price. So you could pretty much filter out some websites for some devices. So essentially you would make a profile for your kids, select a device that applies to that. Then you can actually filter out some websites. You can filter out some categories and then you could set some basic timing limits. So if you want more advanced parental controls, that does require a separate subscription and that will give you more fine tuning and just more options in general. And then we get to kind of the main, the fourth tab, which is, I see that as kind of the main tab where you can actually set your Wi-Fi names and change them if you wanted to. So essentially you get three main Wi-Fi names. You get the 2.4 and 5, you get a separate six, six gigahertz if you wanna enable that, which is actually what I did to do all my testing. And then finally you get an MLO, multi-link operation, if you wanna do that. So MLO is basically Wi-Fi 7, if you have a compatible Wi-Fi 7 device, MLO allows multiple bands to be connected at the same time. So if you have a compatible, again, Wi-Fi 7 device like the OnePlus 13, if you connect it to the MLO band, it can connect to more than one band at the same time to try to improve your speeds. However, in most of my testing, I've actually just realized that just connecting to the six gigahertz band with most routers, this one included, it actually gets me just as fast speeds, if not even faster sometimes, but generally speaking, it's usually just as fast as the MLO, so I kind of don't even enable the MLO anymore. I like the MLO more for wireless backhaul when we're talking about mesh systems like the Deco. Then it allows you to make a guest network. Again, you can set up the 2.45 and the six gigahertz, and you can make a separate IoT uh, Internet of Things Wi-Fi with a separate 2.4 and a separate five gigahertz band if you want to do that for your smart home devices like security cameras. This does support Easy Mesh, so if you have another Easy Mesh compatible router, you can actually make a mesh network out of it. And you can also set up VPN if you wanted to, and there are some more advanced controls if you actually go to 192.168.0.1 and that will give you some more additional options. And another thing that was interesting with this is there is a Wi-Fi scheduler where you can actually have your Wi-Fi on just in general during certain times of the day. Let's say if you wanted your Wi-Fi off at night for whatever reason, you can actually set the schedules. And obviously firmware upgrades and stuff like that is within the Tether app. You can also control the LEDs as well if you wanted to turn them on or off basically. In summary, this is a very good router for internet speeds of up to 2.5 gigabits. It can support faster speeds than that up to 10 gigabits. However, these two, these two, <laughs> these four 2.5 gigabit ports would actually be capping those speeds to 2.5 gigabits. So I would recommend this for up to those 2.5 gigabit speeds. And the Wi-Fi speed rating on this thing actually pretty much fairly easily allows that to get to those speeds if you have a very fast Wi-Fi 7 device like the OnePlus 13 or the Galaxy S25 Ultra. So overall, solid performance out of this thing, and you get some flexibility as well because it is Easy Mesh compatible. So if you wanted to get another Easy Mesh compatible router in the future, you can get that and create a mesh network out of it. Just a solid, solid router. So with that, thank you guys for watching. Smash that subscribe button. I'll put the product links down below. If you guys have questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.